finally tonight we go down to the desert Arizona where the defending Western Conference champions the Phoenix Suns got off to a good start against the Dallas Mavericks they win 121-114 last night uh DeAndre Ayton their their high man with 25 points also had eight rebounds uh Devin Booker still trying to progress his way back into the fold he had 23 points nine rebounds eight assists uh Chris Paul 19 points and just three assists, but you know, good enough. The Mavericks get a uh, they get a great night from Luca. He poured in 45 points, was 15 for 30, also 12 rebounds and eight assists. Uh, the supporting cast, though, uh, not quite up to par, especially considering uh, a guy with the jersey number of 42, the second leading scorer for him with 19 points. He hit five for eight from three. That would be Maxi Kleba. Uh, but just 13 points on six for 16 for Jalen Brunson, who was really emerged, who really emerged in that first round series, kept him afloat while they were waiting for Luca to come back. Uh, another somewhat underwhelming performance from Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, Drink, uh, did this game uh, encourage you or discourage you from what you saw from the Mavericks? Um, if Mark Cuban came out right now and said. I'm thinking about changing the team name from the Daleks Mavericks to the Daleks Maverick. I wouldn't be mad because Maverick, the Dallas, the, the Dallas Donchets. Yeah, just 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 Maverick, just single, just one single guy, just one <coughs> one guy. Um, because that's what it looks like out there. And I'm gonna tell you right now, folks. I don't give. I don't care how good Luca is. Dang. Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you right now. That's that's not gonna cut it. You're not gonna beat the number one seed. The number one overall seed in the NBA with one single guy. That's just not going to cut it. And as much as, well, I don't even know why I'm surprised because they've been one guy since I can remember. I'm trying to think, like, when the hell did he ever have somebody to really be consistent anyway? Jalen Brunson just came alive. So, you know, Jay, I know you love yourself some Luca. Um, I, I think he's a phenomenal young talent. Hey man, he he about to be in um Russell Wilson territory here. You know how we always crown, you know, hey man, get this man an offensive lineman. God, can the man get some protection? He would be so much more elite if he had some protection. <clears throat> well, Luca, he's in that range where we like, come on, get the man some help. The team would be so much better if the man had some help. That's what Luca at right now. We see what he did done in the past against. He's the Los Angeles Clippers killer, pretty much, in the past. And then we, we know what his talent level is. We know what he can do. But it's just like, what's the use of, I don't know, having a Rolls Royce if you stay in a trailer park? It's just like, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? What, what are we doing here? You got a Clyde, a Clyde Dale's horse in there, but you, you don't got no stable for him? You 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 <laughs> come out of the back of your house or something. It's it's just come on, man. What are we doing? Like it's <clears throat> this offseason, I expect Mark Cuban to look upgrade the I mean, listen, upgrade that roster. You gave a good coach. I'm I'm I like Jason Kidd, and I think Jason Kidd is probably using him to the best he can use him without knowing what the rest of the team gonna do. But listen, we talked about this earlier. Dor- Dorian Finney playing 40 minutes, I get it. He a 3 and D guy. You got to give me more than that, though. I'm, uh, you're playing 40 minutes. Luca played 44, you played 40. Nobody else was in the 40-minute range. Everybody else was under that. I get it. If he a 3 and D guy, I got that. But if you're going to tell me that's the guy, the second, the guy to play the second most minutes, well, what in the hell is Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie? And, and, like, Spencer Dinwiddie played 30 minutes. Got you a whopping eight points. Like, I don't give a rip that he coming off the bench. You got him on the team for a reason. He's supposed to be that guy to get the second unit going. That's not going to cut it. That's just not going to cut it. Um, Jalen Brunson, you know, we done had all this to say about him in the first round against Flat Soda. So we looking real good yes. when we out here going to get stale bread and we feeding it out the seagulls on the beach. We look we <laughs> real, real good, right? But then when we out here playing some premier talent, when we playing a premier team, now you look like Jalen Brunson. You look like that dude that was, you know, flop around with the G League for a little bit. We're going to need you to um, come on with it, all right? Like, we can't have you giving us a flash in the pan against Utah and then not showing up again. 
Because if at this rate, Luca might be facing a young sweep of Ruski. So he they might want to help this man out um, to make this series competitive. And on to Phoenix, man. Uh, DeAndre Aiden played a good game. I just didn't think he played the game that I envisioned in my head. I thought he was going to come out here and just straight wreck shop, start putting people in foul trouble good and early. Um, but like you said, somehow he'll lose that free throw line. I don't know how you do it. Um, but I just – I really thought – him and Chris Paul was going to have a game plan to where, like, they was going to really beat up on that front front court of, of, um, the, of, the, of the Mavericks. And they didn't really do it. Not to say they really needed to, because when you look at the starting five, the way that they, the, the points are spread out, it was pretty, pretty evenly, um, usually. Like I say, if, if you get productivity from your starting five like that, it's usually a good thing. You're usually either you you either win the game you're playing or you're very competitive in the game that you're playing when you have it like spread out like they did because everybody came to the part of the play. Then you look at Cam Johnson, he come off the bench. Um he he gave you uh I looked at it earlier, I want to say like 17 off the bench. Mm-hmm. Um but you look at these things, listen. Jay, all I'm going to say, and I'm going to wrap this up because Zoom ain't our best friend right now, and I'm going to say this. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, if if this is what they're going to give Luca for the rest of this series, go ahead and pack him up. I, I know Luca is an elite talent, but the basketball takes more than one guy. Not even Michael Jordan can win by himself. So with that said, that you need more. I'm sorry. You need more. Whoever your second, like, Second guy that played that many minutes, he's going to have to give you more. Whoever you, if, if Dorian is just a defensive guy, then Jack Bronson and Dinwiddie and all those guys just need to do more. It's just that simple. Because as you see over there at Phoenix, they got their act together. They trying to make it back to the NBA Finals. They ain't got time for none of this. They ain't going to be flopping around. I got what we seen against New Orleans. Last night wasn't what we seen against New Orleans. They, they, they came out to play. All right? So – Different series, different attitude, what might have you. And I got a feeling that at some point we're going to get to see a dominant De- um, uh, Deontay Aiden. Um, and when when we see that dominant Aiden, I think that's when Dallas really, really going to be in trouble. Because 42 for, you know, Max Cleaver is his name, I guess. But for, for what it's worth, right? If they just say Aiden would have wore him out and got him in foul trouble, you wouldn't have got those points from him because he'd been riding the bitch. So it's like that's something to think about. Like you might not even have Cleaver like that for the majority of the se- the series if you know Phoenix start playing a different brand of basketball. So yeah, man, um, this series could be over quick if Luca don't get some help quick, fast, and in the hurry. Even even with that, um, you know the fact that he didn't get any help. Uh, didn't get as much help as he should have. Forty-five, though, man, that's a, that's a lot. And then they got Bridges, they got Crowder. I really thought that was forty-five points against a defensive player at a year finalist, and like Jay Crowder, pound for pound, one of the the toughest and most like the classic, the classic. Like you don't want to see that guy in an alley at night. You don't want nothing to do with that guy. And yet Luca undeterred puts 45 on their heads it's Listen, even more it's even all i'm gonna say is this that's cool he did that but he took the same l that trey young took with two points uh, uh l is an l got it fantastic yo but he could he could, listen jordan scored 63 points in the game and lost like it is what it is like he needs help to win the game because whether he I, I scored 12 would be cool but if he want, you got to win the game. I get, I I get it, it. But there, uh, but there is a, it, but there is, there is, even though it, I get it, it's an L is an L, but I mean, something, I think it matters how you lose. Like Luca out here putting up 45, going 15 for 30 is completely different than Trey Young putting up eight and going two for 11. He's been losing impressive since he's been in the NBA, since we're putting it that way. He's been losing impressive. He's been taking teams to six games since he's been in the NBA. What has he got? All right, Luca. We need sixty from you now. Step it up. You're not. You're not doing that. But, but yeah. I mean, look. If that. But if that's what Luca is gonna give you, 
I, I gotta believe. I don't. I don't know if I don't think you can get swept if that's what he's doing. Not saying he'll get you forty five a night, but if he can get you thirty five a night, all you all it takes is for those other guys to adjust a little bit and play. Because they look, Brunson. Brunson can play better than that. <laughs> and then what? Then what he's just do at this point. He's due to come out here and give you some, you know, give you twenty off the bench. He's he's got to he's got to do better and bring the juice for that second unit. The other thing is. I don't know what the hell some of this crap is about th- these front court people. Dwight Powell in 42, which you combined two rebounds. What is this? And I'm going to tell you again what I told you last week. Jason Kidd, you need to page Morjanovic, get him off the state farm commercials. I think he needs some minutes. I think he needs some minutes. I mean, he going he gonna to do better than two rebounds. He's going to do better than that. And I mean, he can be effective on the offensive side. You might look, you, you might, it might cost you in the pick and roll game on defense, but man, at least like if you give up some wide open shots, they're going to miss some and he's going to at least clean the glass for you. So, I mean, the front, you got to, you got to do better on the glass. They lost the rebounding game by 15. Luca, though, Luca out here leading you a rebounding with eight. Your center pile gets one, 42 gets one. I mean, come on, man. Like you can't you can't allow these guys to just completely just overrun you on the glass. But of course, Lucas gotta get more help. It's gotta be, I think, I think Doran Finney Smith did his job. 42 did his job. It's gotta be those secondary guys. The the same dudes that kept you afloat in the Utah series have gotta just do this be the be the be the Robin and be the third wheel. Brunson and Dinwiddie, they they obviously gotta be a little bit better. And I think they, I think they will be. Now it might not mean that they win the series, but I think I don't think I don't I don't see a sweep in this one. But again, but then think about it like this: coming against and playing the defending champions or the defend, defending Western Conference champions, that is, it is a little bit different than playing in flat sodas. So maybe game one was just an adjustment period, and these guys weren't they weren't as prepared as they thought they was. Now coming into game two, they know more what to expect. They understand what's going to be required. Maybe that'll have something to do with it too, because I know you and you and I both agree <laughs> playing Phoenix is way different than playing Utah because Utah that's out here halfway clowning around, and we know it's true. So I mean, maybe maybe that's part of it too, and maybe that maybe them having a better understand of who they're going up against, maybe that'll make somewhat of a difference. <laughs> 